Hello. I just graduated from inpatient treatment. I was addicted to things like meth and heroin, but now I'm recovering gratefully by the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to give you a full overview of what this channel is going to be about, because this isn't a channel trailer, it's just the first episode. I used to be an avid YouTuber, podcaster, and website operator, but all that went out the window when I started using. Now for the last three years, I've been living in the Twin Cities either homeless or in some form of treatment, like the Salvation Army's treatment program or Teen Challenge. There's lots of crazy stuff to tell, no doubt, and over time you'll get to hear it all. But I just want to give you a good example of what this channel is going to be like. And it's not going to just be a vlog, it's going to be about all kinds of addiction-related topics. The clinical, the philosophical, the scientific, and the spiritual. Since I just got out of inpatient treatment, this first episode's topic is going to be what makes a good treatment center. This is a sensible topic choice because the treatment center I just came from was a very good treatment center, fortunately. Not to say it wasn't without its problems, but the clinical staff were talented, the programming was relevant, and the groups were productive. The schedule was well-crafted, the food was great, there was even a house therapy cat named Glover. We'd yoga once a week, and we did short guided meditations before each group to settle in a little after running around, getting your morning chore done, and hopping in the shower, grabbing a quit smoke. And this seemed to work well, because group therapy was very constructive, intimate even. Everyone participated well. We started with check-ins each day, uh, 1 to 10, how are you doing? Uh, we had homework assignments, such as an autobiography. Uh, I felt like I really got to know people well just from that. People shared difficult and painful things. They were encouraged well. And all this stuff follows from a treatment center having the most important factor in place. Unfortunately, this is not under the direct control of either the clinical staff or the management. And that important factor is the attitudes of the actual clients slash patients. Are they serious about recovery? Are they there for the right reasons? Or are they just there because they're looking for a place to stay, for example? Or are they maybe trying to beat a case? This doesn't mean everyone with legal issues is necessarily going to be a negative thing, but it is something to watch out for. Counselors can't really control this type of thing, but they do have a major impact on the client's attitudes and behavior. They are seen as an authority, so people will follow their lead in a significant way. Everyone is together for group, and the things said and done in group set the tone for the whole house, including everything that goes on outside of group. A good treatment program should be kept interesting. Not too much watching dry recovery videos, but also people can only handle so much of the deep emotional sessions of group therapy, especially when bringing up past trauma. Games like Recovery Jenga, where each block has a question on it related to recovery or goals or a person's life, can be a good change of pace when people are burned out from a real heavy emotional group earlier in the day. These games are a fun way to get to know other people in the house. Yes, good food is a big plus, and it's important because people who've been on hard drugs like meth and heroin for a significant period of time sometimes wear themselves down to bones. The impact of nutrition and the body-mind aspect of recovery will be an episode in itself. But let's just say at my last treatment center, we had home-cooked meals three times a day and the food was excellent. I thanked the cook on my way out and told him I know I won't be eating this good again for a long time. The other most important thing in a good treatment center is the coordination of everything else that's needed to help a client be successful. Their psychiatrist uh, coordinating with their doctor or maybe doing a physical on-site, uh, coordinating with their caseworker or, or probation agent, uh, going to outside meetings, helping with sponsorship to find a sponsor, integrating with their family, having a family night where they can come and learn and interact with the patient. Um, and finally, coordinating with what happens next, the next step. Uh, as far as transitioning them to a sober house and outpatient treatment, which is what I did. I'm at a sober house right now, and I'm in outpatient treatment, which was coordinated with the center I stayed at. These are some of the most important things that make a good treatment center. Next week, we'll talk about what to watch out for and the things that make a bad treatment center. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share this video. It could help someone.